Our first speaker, her name is Kelly. Kelly is a student at Cal Poly, but hails from the Hampton Roads area, and it turns out she is the local organizer for Ignite at Cal Poly, and she's got a few of these under her belt, and I thought she was awesome, and she said, hey, I want to do Ignite. I said, okay, please welcome Kelly. Okay. Hey, everyone. All right. So uh, I'm going to speak really quickly. So this is just a little intro to tell you what I'm talking about. Future leveraging for present business, utilizing economic models and ethos-based rhetoric. You got it? Okay. Deep breath. Hi, I'm Kelly, and I'm really excited to be here tonight. But I don't know if you know this, and I don't want to scare you. But according to the Mayan calendar, the world is going to end this year. And I know what you're thinking. This is some sort of Miss Cleo scam, but I'm psychic, and I can prove it. So the chances of being struck by lightning in a year is one in a million, but I predict lightning will appear in this room in three, two, one. There you go, psychic. <laughs> OK, so it's easy to predict the future when you know all the factors. But there's such a thing as knowing too much about the future as the queen of do-it-yourself entrepreneurship learned when she went to jail for insider trading. So Martha Stewart's friend told her to, uh, told her to sell stocks before the public knew that the FDA didn't approve of his product. So when stocks fell, Martha's money was safe and cozy in its papier mache piggy bank. But cheating the economy is not a good thing. Most of us have to predict when to invest in something based on things like the uh, technology hype cycle, which breaks down the maturation of new technology into five phases. The trigger, the peak, the disillusionment, the enlightenment, and the plateau. Now we try to model the economy using things like Keynesian economics, based on the theories of John Maynard Keynes, who famously said of the future, in the long run, eh, we're all dead. So saying that in the long run, we're all dead is kind of obvious. I mean, everyone dies. If you could make a business out of getting people to bet that they're going to die, well, then you'd have invented term life insurance. And if there was ever a time to get insurance, it's now. Because the doomsday clock, a symbolic indicator of how close we are to total global destruction, was recently moved forward a minute to 11.55 PM. So it's not really clear what being five minutes from midnight really means. But the last time we were there, the president of the Doomsday Clock Society gave us a 50-50 chance of surviving through the year 2010. Now, 50% Odds, that's really good. If you're a gambling man, you would bet on that if you think that everyone dying is good. But um, if you are the type of person who is part Nostradamus, part Vegas frequenter, then you can make just that sort of bet on longbets.com. Though I'm not really sure how you collect on a bet where everyone dies. Uh, <laughs> but it's not just crazy people in tinfoil hats who participate in longbets.com. It's people like Warren Buffett. Longbets.com is actually a great program that gives the winnings to the charity of the winner's choice. And a lot of the participants are people who are experts in their field. But being an expert doesn't actually mean that you're good at predicting the future. According to Professor Philip Tetlock, experts are as, are as good at predicting the future as, quote, a bunch of monkeys throwing darts. But then again, Philip Tetlock is an expert, so what does he know? Uh, earlier this year, Wired Magazine uh, released an article entitled Apocalypse Not, where they listed the four horsemen of the modern apocalypse and ultimately showed that all doomsday theories have proven false, as evidenced by us being alive here today. And I felt kind of like those people who believed Harold Camping when he said that the world was going to end in 1994, which, as you may recall, didn't happen. But they still believed him when he said the world would end in 2011. And I was kind of hoping it would, because I have a lot of student loans to pay off. And <laughs> It seems like a lot of experts just get away with predicting the wrong future all the time. Newspapers, weathermen, the publicist for the Titanic, that smug magic eight ball that said I wouldn't get a date to prom, but going with your cousin totally counts. The only people that can't get away with predicting the future wrong are Italian seismologists who have been on trial for manslaughter for the past few years because they failed to predict an earthquake. And this has really rocked the scientific community, community at a time where we've been doing amazing things like landing the uh, Mars Curiosity space rover. So uh, NASA scientists and engineers had to know to pre-program 
parachutes, retro rockets, and a giant crane to gently drop this rover on the surface of Mars. And they were only able to do that with their literally astronomical knowledge, which is really the reason why we're in this mess. Because Mayans had this great knowledge of astronomy and created a calendar so accurate that people think the end of the calendar means the end of humanity. Uh, now, this isn't the first doomsday theory, and it won't be the last. Uh, as astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson points out, uh, doomsday theorists, theorists always predict that the future, or the, the, that the world will end in our lifetime, because really that's the most profitable time to have an apocalypse. But that doesn't make predicting the future inherently bad. The boldest thing we can do is look at the obstacles around us and say that there will be a future, and that future is going to be bright as long as we show the passion that the rest of these awesome speakers are going to show tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you, Kelly. Well, you just never know what you're going to get at Ignite, huh? I